Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Danny Master 22 in a 10 plus 0 game on chess.com. Let's open with d4 against Danny Master. Okay, knight f6. Hmm, I will play c4. We'll go with the main line. I'm playing with a new mouse today. It's a Logitech. I actually tested it out on my stream last night. I did a Twitch stream. So finally trying to put the, uh, the creaky noiseless mouse that I have to bed, <laughs> which I also have right here. It's... Yeah, it's it's starting to make noise, even though it's a noiseless mouse, and you guys can especially hear it in time scrambles, so many of you have commented on it. Okay, D takes C4. I want to play Queen A4 check against this move and pick up the pawn. Bishop G5 is not the most common move on move 4. Knight C3 is more standard, but it is playable. Okay, Knight C6. Interesting. I don't think I faced this particular move before. Should I play E3 and maybe try to recover the pawn this way? I think I might. Yeah, and e3 fits pretty well with the rest of my plans. I could try to play e4, look for e5, but e3 nicely reinforces d4. Yeah, I don't have to play queen takes c4 yet, so I think I will play e3. So no increment in this 10 plus 0 game. So got to manage that clock well, right guys? And I know my standard games have been trending faster these days. That's just for a couple reasons. One, it's always harder to get the, the longer time control games at the higher rating levels. So this 2700 rating, this is my Blitz rating because this is technically still the Blitz category. Also, producing content on a daily basis. Sometimes I just don't have as much time. So trying to make the videos a little bit shorter makes sense for me. Okay, so Bishop B4 check. I think I'll play Knight C3 against this. So that on A6, Bishop takes C4. B5, I can always play bishop takes B5. That's an important point. So, yeah, let's go ahead and play this. Now here, it might be interesting for black to play queen D5. Looking to keep this pawn? That could have been an argument in favor of knight BD2. So I could more easily attack this pawn on C4. I'm definitely going to look at queen D5 in the analysis. So black prefers this instead. And now here, I may just take on F6 and then take on c4. Yeah, keep this nice and simple. So assuming queen takes f6, bishop takes c4 looks normal. Could maybe make an argument for playing knight e5 here. Knight e5, castles, knight takes c6. Trying to wreck black structure. But black has, hmm, maybe bishop takes c3 check, b takes c3, bishop d7 at that point. I'm falling a bit behind in development if I do that. Hmm. It does put some pressure on black, though, so I'm considering it here briefly. Knight e5, castles, knight takes c6, bishop takes c3. Yeah, I don't think it leads to an edge, though. Okay, so let's go with bishop takes c4. Yep, castles. And now castles, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, e5. Seems like an expected way forward. Maybe I can play bishop d5 at that point. So I'm just going to castle. Bishop b5 was another move that came to mind on that last move. But let's keep it simple. Yep, e5, black playing a freeing move. I don't want to take here. I like my structure as is. Black is also opening up this bishop. So I think going here looks pretty good. And on bishop d7, maybe... Queen a3, something along those lines. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm trying to put pressure on e5 by attacking this defender. Oh yeah, you guys might have also noticed that I just got a haircut. I <laughs> just got back from the barbershop. Two on the sides, four on the top. Actually, not sure this is four. It might be a little shorter than that, like three or something. Nice summer cut, right? So what's most likely from black here? I would say bishop d7. So defending the knight. So if bishop takes c6, black can recapture with the bishop and hit my queen. So as I said, I'll probably move my queen if that happens. Queen b3 or a3, the two moves that most come to mind. Kind of leaning towards a3. b3 would attack that pawn on b7, but I'm not sure about knight a5 at that point. Although maybe then I can play queen b4. Okay, so maybe that's an argument in favor of queen 
b3. Now, if white takes on d4, I was thinking I might play bishop take c6 and try to saddle black with double isolated pawns. Let's say bishop takes c6, b takes c6, then c takes d4. I like the look of that position because my knight may come to e5, a rook can come to c1. I think black's going to have some serious weaknesses there. So that's a big reason for bishop d5 as well. Hmm. You know how sometimes when you make a move and your opponent's thinking, you're actually thinking back at your previous move that you just made and whether you could have improved it? I, I wonder if bishop b5 was better. Because it does a lot of the same things, but if black had played bishop d7 against that, I have more options like taking or playing d5. Whereas on d5, my bishop does block my d-pawn. So I think that's a pretty minor thing, especially in a, in a blitz game. And I already made the decision, so I shouldn't dwell on it too much. Okay, and black does play this. So I was mentioning queen b3 is something I like the looks of here. Yeah, I do like it. So again, I don't really want to take on e5 when black is x-raying my queen. So let's try to play this pretty quickly. Black spent a lot of time on that move, two minutes on that move. So keep the pressure. Okay, and black takes. Almost daring me to take here. But I think black could just capture on c3 if I do that. So I'm going to take this way. Two center pawns. Nicely protected. Black has a three versus one majority on the queen side. But I'm hoping that the b and the c pawns in particular become targets. If I were to put rooks on b1 and c1, I've already got the threat of queen takes b7 lingering in the air. So hopefully those will become targets. Yeah, and if I can get my opponent under five minutes here in the middle game, that bodes very well for my chances, I think. Knight e7 may be interesting here, daring me to take on b7 with either the queen or the bishop. So I'm calculating right now if I could get away with taking with one of those pieces. I probably wouldn't want to take with a bishop because rook b8 pins me, but queen takes, definitely intriguing. I think I like that because if knight takes d5, okay, so now he defends it, so I won't calculate that further. Okay. Maybe rook f c1. <coughs> rook f c1 just to pin this knight. I might reserve this rook to perhaps go here. So, yeah, I'm going to play this pretty quickly. Because if I had played the a rook to c1, then I would essentially be saying that my rook on f1 is going to be good on f1, e1, or d1. And that seems kind of unlikely given the structure. And the fact that there's not really pawn breaks that are possible. These pawns may advance, but I think I'm more so going to look to put pressure on black's queen side. Although for now, black has everything covered. It's pretty sturdy, but I can start thinking more seriously about something like taking and knight e5. Okay, so queen here. A little bit of a pivot with the queen. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so definitely considering this move. Take. Black will take with the bishop. I could play knight e5 at that point. I like my knight. Black may go to d5 with the bishop. They're sort of holding out. Also considering maybe queen c4, kind of a creeping move. Queen c4, if knight a5, go queen c5. Could also think about something like bishop e4. Just move this bishop back if I want to keep it. Queen c4, though, definitely catches my eye here. Maybe looking for queen c5. Black can't move this rook now. That's important because the bishop takes f7. Hmm, black might play knight e7. But I like the look of this. I'm going to do it. Yeah, so got this guy in our sights. Maybe queen c5 in mind. I think queen d6 was a good move for black. Also, bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6, knight e5. 
is more of an imminent threat because bishop d5 can be met by queen takes c7. That's one of the major reasons I like this queen c4 move. Okay, so keeping a close eye on that clock. I spent a minute on that move. That I think has been my longest think of the game. But these middle game decisions could be quite important. Okay, knight e7. Black does play that. So I was thinking bishop e4 here. Just briefly thinking if there's anything else, like queen takes c7, but he goes queen takes d5 if I do that. Ah, do I have rook c5 at that point? Interesting. I had not considered that. Probably doesn't work, though. Black may have rook c8. There's also bishop takes and then knight e5, but there's bishop here. Eh, I don't really like that continuation. I'm going to keep the pressure, so let's go here. I don't want to burn too much time looking at that. Yep, okay. c6 looks pretty standard. Okay, knight e5 comes to mind here. Yeah, I'm going to hold off on queen c5 because i'm just gonna play this and yeah this makes sense as a reply given the time situation i've got a little bit of an edge i think i should keep the queens on board make it more complicated queen c5 probably maintains something but let's keep being annoying with the queen keep creating threats maybe i'll play knight d3 to c5 use this outpost square someday okay i can get this rook involved now that seems pretty good Let's do it. No nonsense move. Things are stabilizing a bit more. There's not as many tactics. Now I'm shifting more towards the b7 weakness since black has played c6. The pawn's really secure there. Yeah, kind of an eye towards playing this, I think. Bishop d5. Mm -hmm. I may trade the bishops. Because I don't want to waste time moving my bishop away. And black's bishop seems good. So yeah, I think I will trade that. If black takes with the pawn, then they have an isolated pawn. And also the c file is opened up a bit. So I think they're going to take with the knight, most likely. And now, do I do this maneuver I was mentioning? Knight d3 to c5. Looks like a pretty good maneuver. Could try to double up my rooks on the b file. But I like this a little bit better. Just see how black intends to defend this guy. So I've committed all my pieces to the queen side and the center to some degree, but that doesn't mean I'm forgetting about my king. My king is pretty safe. Black doesn't have too many pieces to attack me with here. It's not inconceivable that black will try to play something like f5, but I don't think it's that dangerous. Even if black got in f4, I could always play e4. I could also meet f5 with g3 if I wanted just to further discourage f4. So my king side's a little bit naked in terms of pieces, but no weaknesses and no pieces really bearing down on my position. But still keeping in mind stuff like can black ever play knight takes e3 here? Okay, black's getting pretty low now. This is going to be a big problem because black's going to be playing bullet pretty soon. I'm playing blitz and black's going to be playing bullet in a second. So knight c5 is my default move next. And then my next possible plan, assuming black defends b7, try to double up the rook somehow. I've got to be mindful of knight c3. Maybe I go to b3 with the rook to cover c3 and double that way. Okay, and black does play f5. Kind of leaning towards f, uh, g3 here. It's just a helpful move in almost every circumstance going forward. Knight c5, though, also does seriously come to mind. Let's play g3, though. Yeah, just nice to always have this, this escape route for the king. I weaken these squares in playing g3, but there's no knight that can land there. Okay, and black does play g5, so I think black's going all in at this point. They're throwing the king's the king side pawns forward, exposing their own king. I think black realizes the time situation is not good for them. So I can play knight c5 and just try to threaten the b7 pawn. I can play knight e5, perhaps. 
I can even pin queen here is interesting, looking for f4, e4. I think I'm gonna play knight c5. Let's just attack that pawn first. Queen comes back, okay. Defense. Mm -hmm. Could play rook b3, looking to double as I was describing. That may be a handy defense on the third rank. Also queen b3, again, I'm thinking about. Don't think any sacrifices are gonna be good yet. Queen c2 is another consideration. Let's go rook b3. The idea of meaning this with this. Yeah, I feel like this should be a pretty good multi-purpose move. Defend along the third rank, prelude to doubling on the b file. Because black probably isn't going to be able to hold the queen side pretty soon. Okay, now let's play this. As planned. Black could take here. I'll probably take with the H pawn. I don't think I'll black I'll take Black's Knight. It looks too dangerous right now. Okay. Could play Queen C4 check here. Queen C4, Black would have to play King H8. Only thing is that kind of pushes Black's King in a direction I think he wants to go. I could double the rooks, because knight takes e4. I don't think knight takes e4 is actually a threat. Am I wrong about that? If I double knight takes e4, rook e1, knight takes c5, queen c4. I'm going to make black figure that out. Basically dare them to take this pawn. But yeah, if takes, rook here, knight takes c5, hits my queen, but I have this queen c4 idea. Okay, now let's take. And if takes, rook e1, black moves the queen on the f file, I can take and I'll be defending f2. So I think it would be gutsy for black to take there. Knight g4 is possible, but I can take b7, I can play f3 even if I need to. Critical stage here. Try to keep this pawn here. That's why I captured this way. Gives my king a little bit more protection taking this way. Yeah, I think black's just going to run out of time soon. They basically need to mate me in 20 seconds. With this many pieces on board, not likely. Okay, um, I don't think it really matters which rook I use, so I'm just going to play this one. Yeah, and check. And black can play knight e6. Oh, actually, there's that. Okay, <laughs> fair. Well, take. So I actually did lose a pawn in that transaction. But I have a massive time advantage, so it worked out all right. Um, okay, let's go here. Yeah. This is just going to be a, a flag situation. Okay. Yeah. You hate to see the game end like that, but that's the nature of no increment blitz, even with ten, 10 minutes per side. Okay, so I actually did miscalculate that. I missed that queen f7... was a defense here. I think there's also knight e6, so I missed a couple things in this position. Although knight e6, rook takes e6 looks decent for me with the attack here, attack on the pawn there. Even here, black could play queen f7, I guess, and pin me. So, okay, but interestingly, that decision proved to be pretty decent because black spent a long time figuring out whether to play knight takes e4 or 49 seconds. So, not my cleanest game, More like felt more like a clock as a weapon game. But I think there were still some instructional points to this. 
trying to think where I could have improved round about here. Because, like I said, Black is really committed to the attack at this point. Hmm. Maybe Rook B3 wasn't so good. And for that matter, maybe I shouldn't play G3. Because G3, in a way, does strengthen Black playing G5 and F4. I just didn't really think Black would go for that. And I felt like G3 was a helpful move. But now I'm second-guessing it. I'm thinking maybe I should have just stuck to my plan on this side of the board. So let's say I played Knight C5 here, Queen E7, then this. Oops. Rook B3. By analogy with the game, this is the same position as in the game, except these moves have not been included. So now when this happens, here I have better options. Like I could play F3, for instance, and defend. And I think my king is not very weak. Yeah, and then I'm... I go to double. I still have queen c4 check if I always need it. So in the analysis here, I'm going to look at that moment because I think that was possibly a mistake on my part. Move 23 playing g3. I mean, I feel like I'm probably still better here because black looks to be more under pressure than I do. But in light of what happened in the game, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, knight takes e4. I guess I can't really punish that. I could play rook e3, but it's the same thing. Knight takes c5, queen c4, black has queen f7. Yeah. And this endgame, the position we got to in the final position, this is a draw with the pawn on a2 because black will never be able to free up this rook. And if black brings the king over to b3 or b2 to uh, guard the a2 pawn so they can move their rook at that point, I can check on the b file. The only way black could win this position is if they created an annoying pass pawn on the king side that forced my king out, but for instance, let's say the game goes like this and I just wait, and black even does this, and I still wait. Um, if black ever plays check, I'm not going to take it with my king because of rook h1 and then black queens. I will play king h2. And this is a known draw because... Even if black were to win my f-pawn, even if black brought their king down and won my f-pawn, I have a fortress. I can just keep my rook on the a-file, defending against black moving their rook and freeing up their a-pawn to queen. And there's no way for black to make progress here. So, you know, this, this was all played in a flash, but just wanted to point that out. Black does have winning chances here, though, if black doesn't push the pawn to a2. So, although I probably, I probably have enough to draw, I would think, here. Since Black's king is not very active, my rook occupies a good position, monitoring both sides of the board. Okay, so going to check that moment when g5 is played. Also check the opening. I want to see if uh, bishop b5 was better than what I did, bishop d5. I kind of think it is. Because like I was saying, if I had played bishop b5, I can still entertain bishop takes c6. That's the main threat here. Bishop takes c6 followed by knight takes e5. But... On bishop d7, I have d5 or even taking here. You know, if I take, black can't take this way because I take and I win a piece. So let's click over to the analysis board. Yeah, this bishop g5 variation, like I was saying, not as common as knight c3 in this position, but I like playing it. It's a little offbeat. You have some flexibility with the knight. I mean, I've seen in some cases the knight can come to d2. So black took, queen a4 check, knight c6, and let's consult the opening explorer here. Okay, looks like only two games from this position, neither in neither of which did white play e3, the move I played in the game. So queen takes c4 was played in one, and knight c3. Well, let's see what the engine thinks about this position. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. I think you can. Okay. And I usually like to check the database before I check the engine if I'm curious about anything in the opening because I I more so lean on the experience of human players, you know, that famous saying, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I want to know what these historically strong players, grandmasters, players that have come before me have played in these positions, more so than I want to know what the engine thinks, although I recognize that the engine is super strong and often can come to better conclusions. I want to know what the humans have played because I'm a human myself, despite what some of you guys may think, and I have to play these positions, so I want to be comfortable with those, whereas the engine may suggest something that makes sense to an engine, or the engine has calculated to, to be good, but may not be uh, best for a human to play. 
Okay. Looks like all these moves are pretty close in value. White has a small advantage here, but e4 would be an ambitious way to play. Look for e5 and try to regain the pawn this way. So e3, black gave this check. Oh, and I wanted to check queen d5 here. When I played knight c3, I didn't really realize that queen d5 was possible, but that would be an interesting one. Trying to make it hard for me to regain the c-pawn, because queen d5 holds it with this, and my knight is pinned. So the engine says I can do this, and then what? Knight d2. Aha, uh -huh. knight d2. Nice retreat to threaten knight takes d5 now that I've broken the pin on this diagonal. And also add another attacker to c4. That makes sense. Although black can take and play b5. This looks like some theory. I feel like we've maybe even transposed to a theoretical line. Yes, we have. Interesting. There's something in my memory banks that says, hey, I've looked at something like this before. Interesting. I think that comes out of a semi-slav? No, it couldn't be a semi-slav because the pawn's still here. Yeah, maybe maybe even this line, just by a different move order. Like, did Mama Diara play this or something? Don't know how I checked the actual games. Hmm, interesting. I'll look that up later, but okay. So that, that transposes to a different variation entirely. And actually, with bishop b4 check, we're in uh, a different line. You see, there's no games in this position when I played e3. And then suddenly, after bishop b4 check, there are games. Okay, cool. Cool how that happened. Okay, so back to the game itself. Black played h6, which seems reasonable. And I took on f6, queen takes, bishop takes c4. So black now has the bishop pair, but the knight is a little awkward. I think these moves all make sense. Castle, castle, takes c3. Yeah, because black starts to get a bit more nervous about this bishop being out here. You know, if e5 now, you don't want to have to calculate what happens if d5, because... Or, or knight d5 for that matter. d5 would kick the knight away as a defender, or attempt to. And yeah, knight d5 also trouble. Numerous problems here, like queen d6, take on e5, deflection. So I think this position is critical. And let's see if bishop b5 is better than bishop d5. Okay. So the engine says bishop b5 is nearly plus one. It also likes bishop d5. It's right up there. Not a huge difference in the eval. But yeah, I think in hindsight, based on what I started to understand after I had played bishop d5, I think this was better. Yeah, again, because this is going to run into these issues. And if takes on d4, I can insert this capture. And I think any sort of middle game like this, either with the queens on or off the board, is very nice for white, because I feel like that c6 pawn is probably going to be lost. I have just so many convenient ways to attack it. Position's kind of open, so that may be something the bishop could look forward to, but the knight is no less good here. Jumping in and, yeah, chronic weaknesses for black, you don't, you don't like this. So I wish I would have played bishop b5 there. That said, though, bishop d5 also up there, according to the engine eval. So bishop d7... Ooh, knight takes e5 is not a move I really calculated here. Interesting. Yeah, I probably should have, though. I guess I was hesitant to, to play that move, and I instinctively wanted to move out of discovery issues, but it's only the third recommended move by the engine, but let's look at that. So knight takes e5, inviting knight takes with the attack here. But the computer's idea is that after takes, I'm hitting this queen. And if this chain reaction starts, I guess I take b7 at the end is the point. Yep, and I go up a pawn. And black has an unhealthy-looking kingside structure. Okay. Yeah, I guess my positional instincts were discouraging me from entertaining lines like this. Where I end up with pawns like that. But hey, it does appear to win a pawn. And if black doesn't take it, yeah, let's say they play queen e7. I can move my queen, maybe defend it. Or still go after b7. Computer says queen e4 here. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that was a possibility. Still, though, I think queen b3 should keep keep a nice edge for me. I'm at plus one on the engine. So takes. Yep, take with a c pawn. 
In taking with the C pawn, I get two center pawns, as I was saying, and I keep an uninterrupted pawn structure here. If I take with the E pawn, I have three pawn islands now, right? Three pawn islands instead of two by taking this way. The less pawn islands, the better, typically. Okay, so rook here. Looks like one of these positions, I'm just checking out the string of moves that the computer is spitting out here. Looks like one of these positions where I can maneuver for a while and increase my advantage playing in the center and on the queen side, but it'll take some time. Rook fc1. Yeah, queen d6 is good. I played queen c4 in the game. Bishop e4 is also up there. I think basically all this is fine. Yep, bishop e4. I was mentioning queen takes c7. I'm not, I don't think that's, that is working due to this. I was briefly considering rook c5 here, trying to deflect the queen away from defending the bishop, but I think there's too many problems with it. Yeah, rook b to c8, for instance, counterattacking. So here, c6. Now I played knight e5, right? Still looks fine. Here, I kept the queens on. A6. Yep, rook b1. Include this rook. Again, that's the reason why I played rook fc1 as opposed to rook ac1. I like the rooks on these files as opposed to files behind the d through h pawn where it's more closed. Yeah, you know, interestingly, the eval is dropping a little bit, though, right around here. It's still nice for white. And here I traded bishops. Black took with the knights. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we get to this f5 decision here. Where I played g3, but after the game I was sort of lamenting this move. Not too bad, according to the engine. Queen c4 is also given. Yeah, putting the queen on c4 or b3 will make sure that if black plays f4, I can win material by doing this with the pin. So that's kind of compelling, but I just always thought black would move their king if that happened. Like king h7 or something. Didn't really see what I was gaining out of this. So g3 may be all right, huh? So how should I respond to g5 in that case? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I was considering moving the knight back to e5 in various circumstances, but I was also pretty intent on putting the knight on c5 and attacking that b7 weakness, because that's the major uh, point in black's position that I can hope to pile on. So that's why I was strongly looking at knight c5. Yeah, I mean, here too, I'm maintaining that plus one edge. Now I played rook b3. F4, I played E4. Now the edge is even growing. Knight E4. Hmm. Computer wants me to check here. I thought about that because if I check, black can't step to G7 because they're met with Knight E6 with the fork. And blocking is no good with the queen because I can trade and I think black will have problems on B7. So, seems kind of awkward for black. Black would have to go to h8 or h7, I suppose. King h8. Yeah, I saw lines with e5, although I was hesitant to give black that d5 square again. The computer thinks this is fine, though. Queen back to c2, maybe looking to double again. And I'm defending laterally. Okay. So maybe I got in trouble just by allowing the knight takes e4 thing, period. Maybe when black plays knight f6 here, I just have to say, all right, I need to play e5 or... Maybe even rook e1 or something. Computer says f3 as well. Keeps an edge for me. Moving a lot of pawns near my king, but... Yeah. So even though the computer says g3 is acceptable, I think, from my human point of view, I, I would prefer, in hindsight, not to play with that move. I think it'd be better to play, like I was saying, rook b3 and get ready to double this way. I think that just makes this whole scenario a little more manageable. Yeah. Oh, I should also point out knight f6 is going to be met by e5 in a lot of situations. So, black may not even be able to do that in some situations. 
was that a thing in the game at all? No, because the queen went to e7. That's right. Knight c5. Black played the queen here. So let's check what happens on knight f6 when I was goading black into playing knight takes e4. So rook here. Take. H takes. Ah, knight takes e4, so I just needed to insert queen c4 first. And then it's okay for me still. Hmm. Although maybe not for the reason that I was thinking of. Here, rook f7. So if I play rook e1, there may still be some discovered attack issues, like knight e6 or knight e2 going after the queen. The computer says just play rook takes b7 here. Okay. Yeah, and then we can crash land on the, on the seventh rank here. Attacking this. This knight's also loose. Yeah, this looks really tough for black, especially in a time pressure situation. Okay. So a bit of faulty calculation there for me. Rook e1. My worst move of the game, but it came in a situation that was great for me on the clock. Yeah, knight takes c5 was nice. Then I gave this check, but black can play queen f7 or even knight e6. Yeah, queen f7 was good. And we get into this endgame where I'm down a pawn. With, I guess, some drawing chances, but definitely, definitely worse. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, comparing it to a game, like in a, in a long time control game situation, definitely would have thought harder about the, the king side situation. Like, again, that G3 move, I think I would have paused and considered more closely whether I want to commit to that weakening. But the tenor of the game was encouraging me to complicate and even allowing knight takes E4 felt a little bit wrong, and it, it turned out to be wrong the way I played it, but sort of a clock as a weapon decision, so... Take that for what it's worth, guys. That's kind of the reality of the time control. Like to win games on the board, but hey, I've I've also been flagged, and I know <laughs> that it's the same amount of points whether you win on the board or on the clock, and same thing if you lose on the board or lose on the clock. But interesting game. I think this game shows how you want to maneuver against a structure like that on the queen side where these pawns are all back, and it's a three versus one, and you have the two center pawns. So that can sometimes happen out of d4 structures. Queen's Gambit declined, Rogozin type positions, those sort of structures. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks to Danny Master 22 for the game, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.